Hey YouTube, it's Charlie from Reader Trend Writer, and today I am doing a book review of the Writing Craft Book Story Genius by Lisa Cron. I have to admit that I went into this book with really high expectations. I had heard a lot from the writing community here on YouTube and AuthorTube about how much they really loved this book and how it was better than even Save the Cat, which is my favorite craft book. So I went into it with really high expectations, and unfortunately, they were not met. There were things that I liked about the book and I can see why people like it so much so I'm going to just start there. So the main information in the book which is that your story is not your plot. Your story is how your plot works to change your character and the change that you see in the character because of the things that happen to them. So your story revolves around your character and the change that we see there not around the things that happen just in the book. And I think that's a really important concept for any writer to understand and I do know that there are a lot of beginner writers out there that don't understand that and it talks very explicitly about it and it kind of drills it in over and over again so that you can see how important it is and I do like that about this book. And I can see how that would change the way that you are writing your book and I think that that is a really good change. And so I think that is why people love this book so much is because, and they equate it with Save the Cat. Like I say Save the Cat for me, the reason that I love it so much is because it changed the way that I outline and write my story in a, in a, and it made it better. And I can see how Story Genius would do the same for some people. The idea for me wasn't new. I read books like Creating Character Arcs by... Oh, I don't remember her name, but I'll link it here down below somewhere. I'll have it there. I've also read, I think that Save the Cat doesn't talk as explicitly about this, but I feel like Save the Cat Writes a Novel also has this in it, where it starts with your character's flaw and builds, all of the beats build on top of the flaw and are there to enhance the flaw and push the character along their character arc. And so I felt like the information here was also found, I found it in other places already. And so that could be part of why this book wasn't as useful for me. Even though I did find some good reminders and I was also able to see some things from like a different perspective because of the way that she talked about it and the way that she was explicitly talking about it. And so I did like that. One of the best reminders is just to not get sidetracked by the plot, to really focus on the character arc and your the lie, your character's misbelief or flaw. She calls the flaw the misbelief and I actually like that term a lot. And so you focus on the flaw or the misbelief and the plot builds around that rather than the plot kind of running away on its own. And that is a really, really good reminder, a really, really good thing to learn. There were also just a lot of little things in the book that I picked up, like the idea that even if you have more than one point of view in your story, you still want to pick one main character to focus on. And that was really actually really applicable to me right now because I'm currently outlining a book that has two points of view and it's my second novel so I have never done that before so it was a really good reminder and I was able to look and see which of my characters is actually the main protagonist so that when I'm writing the book I can focus on her and have the side character be the side character even though they both get a point of view throughout the book. And the other thing that I found really useful to me specifically that was a smaller subset in here was just how specific you need to get with your character's misbelief and their backstory before you start writing your before you start writing your story because Lisa Cron says that in order to be able to know where your character is going to end up you need to know where they started and we usually we start our novel not at the beginning of our character's story or life obviously and so knowing their backstory and how their flaw was created is really important. And of course, Save the Cat writes a novel talks about this too. They call it the Shard of Glass, but she just specifically was talking about how you need to get really specific with it. And she actually recommends that you write not only the Shard of Glass scene, she calls it something different, but I don't remember what it is. So you need to write the Shard of Glass scene where their flaw starts or their misbelief, where they gain their misbelief. So you need to know what happens there very specifically, but you also should write three scenes between that and the beginning of your novel where their flaw or misbelief gets stronger and stronger as they get closer to the beginning of the book so that by the time the book starts their flaw is deeply embedded and you know why. Like knowing why is a really big theme throughout Story Genius. And that was helpful to me, I'm actually trying to do that. I think she calls them defining scenes. So I'm writing 
three defining scenes on top of my shard of glass scene for both my points of view in my new book. And it's been really fun actually to do that. It's been so fun. We'll see how useful it is when I actually start writing my novel, but so far I've liked it, so. Basically, just to sum up what I liked about the book, the book says that story is change and we're wired to avoid story and that's where the tension comes from. That's where your story is. So I liked that about this book. So if it has such great information in it, why didn't I like it? Well, first it felt repetitive to me. Now this could be because I was already familiar with a lot of the information that was in the book. And so because I was already familiar with it, I didn't need repetition in order for it to sink in and for me to understand it. But I still think that it was pretty repetitive, especially about story. One of the things that was really hard for me was she kept saying, is this story? No, story is this. What is story? Story is this. And I was like, we already know what story is. You've pounded it in already. And can we move on now? So it felt a little bit repetitive. That was not the breaking point for me though. There are actually quite a few self-help type books that I like that are repetitive and I don't mind because I understand that they're just trying to make sure that we understand and keep the knowledge because some a lot of people will read it once and then move on so we really want to make sure that the people reading it they really want to make sure that people reading it get the information and retain the information and repetition is one way to do that so I understand that but my biggest grievance with the book was the way it was written the tone of the book was just so elitist like, so do it my way or you're wrong. And I had a really hard time getting past that. From the very first page of the book, I just had a really hard time getting into the book and actually taking her seriously because she was so down on other people. Like, one of the things she did a lot was she would introduce some writing method or practice that people have, like plotting, pantsing, outlining, story structure, all, all of these different things, she would talk about them, tell me why they were so bad and wrong and you shouldn't do it that way, and then she would introduce her method. This is my method and it's so much better and it will work so much better and if you don't do it this way then you're doing it wrong. Like, I'm sorry but I honestly, it's, I ascribe to the idea that if it's working for you then it's not wrong and there are obviously a lot of people out there who use story structure to make create books like the lady that wrote Save the Cat Writes a Novel, she is a bestseller and she's written 18 novels. Guess how many novels Lisa Crown's written? And I don't mind people not writing a novel and writing a craft book. Obviously I am here on AuthorTube and I am sharing writing advice and I have never published a novel. I have written a novel. I understand Lisa Crown does have um, credentials. She's like, she's a coach so she reads a lot of other people's manuscripts and then tells, helps them fix them and she has obviously done a lot of research because she has good information in here it's just this is actually like it's like a step-by-step -step book for how to write a novel but she's never written a novel and that actually is kind of bothersome to me on top of the fact that she should not be talking in the way that she is if she has never even written a novel like it's one thing to tell someone that they should do something the way that you do it because it works it's another to tell someone that they should do something because you think it works but you've never actually tried it or you've seen other people do it but you've never actually tried it like I'm sorry but I just can't get past that her tone plus that fact just kill me and I honestly I wouldn't actually like the book anymore if she was a bestseller with 18 novels like in like the like Jessica Brody who wrote Save the Cat Writes a Novel but Jessica Brody uses a story structure she does like I said she does incorporate a lot of the character arc and the beats are there to enhance the character arc not the other way around but she uses story structure and she's a best-selling author so story structure is obviously not bad and there are some people who hate story structure who think that it makes their writing terrible and they write great novels too it's just it's just hard for me to see someone be so polarizing and say that if you don't do it their way then you're wrong and to look at specific things that other people do and put them down she was literally putting them down and it was driving me crazy there was one section she got to a section where she was talking about the character's misbelief and she started talking about how most people call it the fatal flaw and talking about why calling it the fatal flaw is so awful and you shouldn't do it and da 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 
And I was like, really? You're gonna put this down? The thing is, I actually agree with her that uh, misbelief is, pr like, I think that misbelief is a better phrase than fatal flaw as well, for a few different reasons, and I don't really wanna go into that right now. My favorite phrase is actually the lie that your character believes, which comes from Creating Character X, and I will link that book down below. But misbelief is good too. Fatal flaw is good too. There are people who might not really understand the concept in the in a really great way when you use the term misbelief that might understand it better if you use flaw, if you use fatal flaw, and vice versa. So why can't we just talk about it like that? Why do we have to put down one and say that, that the other one is the right way to do it and everyone who does it the other way are wrong? Like why do we have to do that? Mm, it was it literally just drove me crazy through the whole book. The other thing about her tone was just like Do it my way. This is a new way of doing it Nobody else has ever discovered that and that was kind of like the feel that I got from the book and I didn't like that because obviously this information is not new to me I understand this. I know other people who have who obviously understand this and have taught it well and it just felt like just teach it. You don't have to be breaking ground here. It doesn't have to be a brand new book as long as it's useful to people. That kind of tied a lot in with like her, look at me, I'm doing it the right way. Everyone else is doing it wrong. So I don't know. I just didn't like that. Anyways, so is this a good book to read? I don't know. I didn't like it. I liked the information in it. I didn't like the book. I will not be reading her other book, even though I'm so sad because I actually already bought it. I bought it at the same time as this one. I can't remember what it's called. But she has one other craft book that apparently gives a lot of information kind of similar to this. This is more like a step-by-step -step guide for how to write a book using it, and the other one came first, I think, and is just more like teaching the concepts. But I just don't like Lisa Cron's writing style very much. I didn't I didn't have fun reading the book and I, even though I learned some things, I didn't feel like it was worth it. But I will say, if you want to learn more about the, the things that I talked about that were good in this, it might be worth the read, especially if you can get past the tone. And I know that there are a lot of writers out there who love the book and weren't bothered by that at all. So maybe I've spoiled it now because now you'll never be able to read it without like noticing it because I pointed it out, you know? <laughs> Anyways, I don't think it's a bad book to read, and I think that it does have useful information in it. I just did not appreciate the way that it was written, and the tone, and I wouldn't recommend it to people. Like, I will never put it on a list that I recommend to other writers because of the tone. Whereas Save the Cat is still the top of my list. I love Save the Cat Writes a Novel, so that's the book I recommend. I actually haven't found a craft book yet that I like more than Save the Cat Writes a Novel, so if you know of craft books that you absolutely love, send them my way. I want to do a book review like this pretty much every month. Next month I will be, let me grab the book. Next month I will be reading Mastering Suspense, Structure and Plot by Jane K. Cleland. And I'm excited for this one because I am really interested in the concept of suspense in books and how to write it. Because I think suspense is really important no matter what genre you're writing in. So if you want to read this before my book review comes out so you can talk with me about it in the comments, you're welcome to. Or if you want to wait and see if it's worth the read or not, then you can look out for my book review next month. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already so that you will see when it comes out. Back to Story Genius though, overall I wouldn't recommend it, but I also don't think it's a bad book to read if you want to learn more about how how much of an influence your character has in the overall story and how change change is more important than just things happening in a plot. So that concept is really important to understand in a book and that does explain that concept well. Have you read Story Genius? If you have, let me know what you thought of it in the comments below, even if you liked it, because it's okay if you liked it and I didn't, I don't mind. Um, you can tell me what you liked most about it and maybe heighten my opinion of it a little bit. Or if you didn't like it, let me know in the comments below what you, what your thoughts were as well. And if you haven't read it, let me know your favorite craft book in the comments below so I can go and read it. I want to be re reading a lot more craft books and talking about them here on my channel. If you liked this video, don't forget to hit subscribe for lots of writing content and hit the thumbs up. Thank you so much for watching my video. I will see you in the next one.